On the day he celebrates his 89th birthday, former Cuban President Fidel Castro has something else on his mind. He insists America owes Cuba millions of dollars because of the trade embargo. He, bu he published the comments just one day before the official flag-raising ceremony at the U.S. Embassy in Havana. CCTV's Michael Voss joins us live from Havana. Michael, what do you make of the timing? Well, Asia, um, was it a coincidence or did the Cubans invite U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to come here on Friday knowing that it was Fidel Castro's 89th birthday? In recent years, his birthday celebrations have been very low-key affairs, but this year it's turned into something special. A free open-air concert in Havana's anti-imperialist plaza located right in front of the U.S. Embassy. But at midnight, the music stopped, replaced by cries of long live Fidel. We wish him good health and happiness. I hope he stays as lucid as ever. And to mark the former leader's 89th birthday, there was a short film showing highlights of the revolution he led. Then the festivities resumed once more. Others came to offer their personal birthday greetings, among them Bolivia's president, Evo Morales. We come on our own accord to join Fidel Castro on his birthday and offer congratulations to our brother Fidel, his government, and all the Cuban people. This week also saw the opening of a photo exhibition of 50 years of Fidel, including some rarely seen images of the two Castro brothers together. Cuba's first vice president and heir apparent spoke there of Friday's dedication of the U.S. Embassy in Havana. It is a victory for the heroism of the Cuban people. The clear lesson of history is that it was unacceptable that a major power kept up barriers to talks with a small country that has only taken on the task of building a better country and better world. There's been no word by Fidel Castro on last month's reopening of the embassies or Friday's visit by John Kerry. His only comments came earlier in the year when he wrote that he didn't trust the policies of the United States but didn't reject a peaceful solution to the conflict. On Friday, the U.S. Embassy will become the center of attention. These birthday celebrations are a reminder that Cuba remains proud of its revolutionary traditions and isn't about to compromise on its beliefs. And Michael, in just a few hours, the U.S. will raise its flag at the embassy in Havana. What is the mood? What kind of preparations are underway? Well, there's been frantic preparation at the, uh, at the U.S. Embassy, trying to get everything ready. There's going to be a, a big press platform inside where, where we can film it. I will be going live from inside the embassy compound on Friday. Um, otherwise, John Ke it's a flying visit. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry comes in in the morning, goes to the flag-raising ceremony. It's a symbolic gesture. It became an embassy on July the 20th at the same time that the Cubans reopened their embassy in Washington. But there is the symbolism of raising this flag. And accompanying John Kerry will be three of the U.S. Marines who actually lowered the flag for the last time on, on January the 3rd in 1961. So a lot of symbolism. There's going to be a reception at the... Uh, at the residence of the, the, the head of the mission here afterwards, and then Kerry will fly back to Washington. All right, Michael Voss, we look forward to your reports on Friday.